Hi guys, welcome back to Lucas 3D Studio. In today's video, I'm gonna test out the Bamboo Lab X1C Combo 3D Printer. Although I love my A1 Mini so, so much, sometimes I really wished that I could print something bigger because my A1 Mini, like the name suggests, is a fun-sized 3D printer. And hopefully I can do that and much more now that I have the X1C. Now, this printer is sponsored by Bamboo Lab, but they didn't get to see the video before I post it online. So everything you see in this video is completely independent and not influenced by the company. So X1 Carbon is Bamboo Lab's pro-level 3D printer, so even though I'm very excited to test it out, I'm also a bit nervous since I've only been printing with my A1 Mini so far. But that's also a great time to see if what I've learned about the A1 Mini can be put into practice here. And if you're an A1 series user and decided to upgrade someday, this video might be helpful to you guys as well. We're gonna print a lot of stuff today and we're gonna see if it can live up to its reputation. It takes no more than half an hour to set up the printer. It came with an instruction booklet which is easy to follow and the build quality is amazing like every other Bamboo Lab printers. They're just so well made and plus they're so aesthetically pleasing. So I'm just gonna go through some key features that the X1C has really quick that my A1 Mini doesn't have. First of all, it's a Core XY printer, while my A1 Mini is a Betzlinger printer. It has an enclosure and a maximum build temperature of 120 degrees Celsius, so you can print something like ABS, PC, nylon, and more. There's also an activated carbon filter installed in the printer to filter those nasty fumes. It has a micro lighter for advanced flow calibration. It comes with the hardened nozzle, so you can print abrasive materials like glow-in-the-dark filaments, sparky filaments, carbon fiber reinforced filaments, and more. It can be connected to four AMSs, so it's possible to print up to 16 colors. It has a 30 FPS camera, so you'll get a smoother live feed compared to the low frame rate A1 mini camera. Like, the live feed of this printer is hard to watch. On the other hand, the X1C live feed is buttery smooth. So besides the printer, I also get to choose some accessories and filaments, and I chose some specific ones because I want to print a lot of things that this printer can print. Which is why I got the 0.2mm nozzle as well as the 0.6mm nozzles. Now I recommend that you get the complete hot end which comes with the fan already installed if you're planning to swap the nozzle diameter often. I also got PC, ABS, CPU, carbon fiber nylon, and carbon fiber PETG filaments. Then I got their new effects sheets and I'm pretty excited to try them out. Now, you don't know which plate you'll get when you buy the printer. On the website, it says you either get the cool plate or the textured plate, which is such a bummer because you have to wait until you get the printer before you can decide which other plates you want to order. I got the smooth plate first, and after finding out that my printer comes with the cool plate, I ordered the textured PF plate and received it a few days later. I've also heard that they don't sell the cool plates anymore, so I guess I'm pretty lucky that I got it with the printer. So signing up and connecting the printer to your account is very straightforward. I was worried that I would get an error since my account is already connected to my A1 Mini, but it doesn't seem to be a problem at all. Now that the printer is calibrated, let's use the cool plate to print a Benchy. I'm gonna apply the glue to the plate as they suggest, and then we're gonna start the print. They recommend to leave the door open when printing PLA, so that's what I did. There's nothing to complain here, the print looks pretty good and almost comparable to my first Benchy I printed with my A1 Mini. I'm also gonna use this support for PLA filament to print this Baby Groot planter model, but they recommend to dry it before use, so I'm gonna use the printer to dry the filament. To do that, I will need a cover. And I can use the filament box for this, but hey, I got this PC filament for a reason, and that is to print this filament cover designed by Marewell. So to print polycarbonate, you have to dry it first. I got this filament dryer from Creality, which I also featured in my previous video. So let's dry it at 65 degrees Celsius for 8 hours. Now let's use the engineering plate to print it. That came out so nice, there's just some little problems at the area where the text is. That aside, I'm pretty happy with the print. Now I'm not gonna use the printer's drying filament program. I'm gonna follow the designer's instruction which you can find in his Maker World page. We're gonna dry this filament for 8 hours at 55 degrees Celsius. 
So let's print this model with the support filament for PLA. Load it in the AMS, then in the slicer, go to the support setting. And you definitely want to go to support raft interface under filament for supports and choose the filament. This will make it so that only a few layers of the filament will touch the model since you don't want to waste your precious filament by printing all the supports with it. Plus, you'll save printing time since your printer won't be doing a lot of filament changes. One thing to note is, you would need the AMS to use this feature. So this model took 12 hours to print. And as claimed, it is really easy to remove the supports. And the best thing is, the supported parts have less to no scarring compared to when you print the supports using the same filament you print your model with. So let's print a plate holder to store all the plates. You won't be needing any glue since it holds the print so well. Now this is the plate holder I designed which is heavily inspired from Jaybird's plate holder and I designed it so I can store both the big and the small plates. I also made a recess for the scraper which is the perfect storage solution for me. You can let the plate to cool down so it'll be easier to remove the model from the plate. Now let's use the smooth plate to do multicolor prints and I'm going to print this Grogu model which is the same model I used in one of my videos where I discussed about the cost of electricity. The print quality is super nice though it has this one black blob on the ear probably caused by the nozzle not being properly cleaned during purging when it changed filaments. I probably have to upgrade the nozzle wiper but that's going to be in another video so make sure you'll check that out. Now let's try out these new effects sheets. I'm going to install the carbon fiber and the galaxy sheets on the steel plate. So let's print the fixture tool and follow the instruction on how to install them, which you can find on Bamboo Labs website. For the galaxy effect, I'm gonna print a cover for my iPhone. I love th this design by Bugoigoi, so I made a similar one on Fusion 360. You need to turn off the LiDAR calibration when you use the effect sheets, and you need to increase the bed temperature to 65 degrees Celsius. That turned out amazing, and I also printed these to make the cover more interesting. For the carbon fiber effect, I first printed the cover which looks amazing but I want to print a toolbox to store my X1C accessories. Just one thing I want to address here, you want to keep the lighter on when you print on the carbon fiber sheet even if Bamboo Lab recommends that you turn it off. I've had three failed prints while trying to print the iPhone cover and once I turned it on, it printed normally. If you experience the same thing, please let me know in the comments below. The result is astounding, I mean look at this cool carbon fiber effect. This box is definitely my favorite print so far. Let's print the other parts and assemble everything together. Now let's print something with ABS. Important safety precaution when you print ABS, make sure your workspace is well ventilated. You don't want to breathe in those nasty fumes. The printer has a small activated carbon filter installed inside it, but I'm a bit skeptical if that's even effective, so I'm gonna open my window, put a fan and point it outside to ventilate the room. I also have a small air filter that I'm gonna turn on. One of the cool things about ABS, other than being heat resistant, impact resistant and tough, you can treat it with acetone to smooth it out to hide these layer lines so you'll get a super smooth glossy surface finish. I'm not gonna cover that today, but perhaps in a future video. Now let's print something with TPU. I want to print the seal for my toolbox and a small airless tennis ball. Now you can't use the AMS to print TPU, so I'm gonna first dry the TPU for 8 hours at 55 degrees Celsius, then print straight from the dryer while it's still on. Let's insert the PTFE tube into the dryer, 
disconnect the tube on the X1C, then connect the tube from the dryer to the X1C. To print the TPU, I'm going to use the engineering plate and apply the glue to it. TPU sticks really well to the plate, so the glue acts like some kind of release agent. I'm just using the Bamboo Lab settings here to print the models. So there's a bit of string going on here, but I can just cut it off. Now let's print the airless tennis ball. That looks great, and there is no stringing as far as I can tell. The support though, it's kind of hard to remove with your hands, so just grab a wire cutter and use it to grab the support and just yank it. Next, I'm gonna print a poop chute for my X1C using this carbon fiber PETG filament. So let's dry it for 8 hours at 65 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna use the poop chute to direct the poop to a small box in this very narrow space and this slim design will be perfect for it. Carbon fiber PETG has a very nice and interesting texture and the surface quality is amazing. Well, besides this layer shift here. I've no idea how that happened, but I did intervene the printer when it printed the first layer, so it was probably my fault. That said, this carbon fiber PETG filament might be my new favorite filament. We're gonna print using PLA again, but this time let's swap this stock hot end with the 0.2mm nozzle hot end. I'm gonna print this color lithophane picture of Deadpool and Wolverine. You can use the lithophane maker to generate the SDL file for it. This looks super nice and you may want to print color lithophanes or lithophanes in general using the 0.2mm nozzle to get the best result. I did a comparison of lithophanes printed using the 0.2mm nozzle and the 0.4mm nozzle in my lithophane tutorial video, so make sure to check that out. Now let's print carbon fiber nylon next. Bamboo Lab recommends the 0.6mm nozzle to print carbon fiber nylon, so let's install it. Nylon is known to be very heat resistant, so I'm going to print this activated carbon refill box. That way, when I need to replace the filter, I can just take the box, fill it with activated carbon and place it inside the printer. Since it can get really hot in the printer, I think carbon fiber nylon is the perfect filament to print the box. So let's dry it at 70 degrees Celsius for 12 hours. I'm really surprised how good this turned out. So this is activated carbon and it's actually from another hobby, but I'll be using this to fill the filter box. It's still early for me to replace the filter, but you can do it by opening this small door here at the back of your printer, take the old filter out and put the new filter in. Now this is the part when I'm most excited about. I bought the SDL file of this Deadpool helmet recently and I'm gonna use my X1C printer to print the helmet. I'm gonna have to print some of the parts separately and it'll take a lot of time to print, so let's do a time lapse. This helmet looks so good, like it's unreal. The printer did a very good job at printing the smallest details of this helmet, although I have to say that I've struggled to find the best support settings for the main part of the helmet. But all the parts printed without problems, and I'm very happy about that. Now before we get to the conclusion, there are some things that I want to mention. The first thing is, if you see this happens on this part of your plate, don't worry about it. This is absolutely normal and the nozzle should rub against it to clean it from any filament residue. Second, it is quite loud, well at least louder than my A1 Mini. And since you need to open the door while printing PLA for example, there's nothing much you can do to reduce the noise of the printer. Though it's relatively easy to install the hot end, it's not the most fun experience for me and I was worried that I would break these small pin plugs the whole time. It's a lot easier to swap the nozzle on my A1 Mini. So after almost 3 weeks using the printer to print non-stop, I would say that I'm very impressed with the performance of the printer. 
Well, to be honest, I don't expect less from Bamboo Lab, especially my experience with the A1 Mini has been amazing. It is such a beast of a printer. And the X1C does almost everything what my A1 Mini can do, and even more. Nevertheless, out of all these print tests, I did have a problem printing on the carbon fiber effects sheet, but it failed three times on me. Well, it worked after I turned on the lighter, so it's not the end of the world. All in all, I'm absolutely happy with the printer. It is such an amazing printer, no doubt about that. So if the X1C is going to be your first printer, you're not going to be disappointed. If you decided to upgrade from a smaller printer and are willing to spend more to get a pro level 3D printer, then X1C might just be the right one for you. I do recommend getting the combo which includes the AMS because having that option to print in multicolor or multi-material is something that you don't want to miss out on. So I hope you enjoyed the video and if it's helpful, I really appreciate it if you could hit the like button and leave a comment to help the channel out. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.